Bismillah. Uh, are we taking it from the, the sisters? sisters? Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My husband's grandmother passed away yesterday and he left for India for the purpose. For at least some months, the emotions within the family will run very high and the relatives will advise about acts of worship that will benefit the departed soul. So I just want to ask you that what are the deeds that the immediate family and the extended family should be doing that will be accepted by Allah during this emotional time? MashaAllah, beautiful question, very important and pertinent. We need to go back to the hadith of Rasulullah SAW uh, regarding إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمَ قطع عنه عمله إلا من ثلاث. When a person, when a human being passes away, his deeds are actually cut off except from three. Uh, one of them is uh, knowledge that the person has disseminated. It will continue, inshallah, as much as the people continue learning uh, and the fruits continue being reaped. At the same time, uh, also the, the hadith makes mention of a sadaqatun jariyah, which means an act of worship, uh, an act of charity that the person engaged in, which would be uh, continuous. So something that the benefit of it continues after the person's life, they would continue getting the reward for it. And at the same time, waladun salihun yad'u lah, which means uh, a pious child making dua for uh, that deceased person. From the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we've heard him making dua li jami'i mawt al-muslimin. For all the, the, those who've passed away from the ummah. So to make dua is perhaps the most powerful gift you could ever give any deceased person. If I were to die, I would actually want people to ask Allah to forgive me and to grant me Jannah. That would be the biggest thing you could ever do. And continue to make the dua and make it again and again and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if the person has had a debt, it would help if you were to contribute towards you know, finishing up the debt. If the person was supposed to fulfill for some reason they couldn't, it would benefit if you perhaps would fulfill that particular hajj by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So like I said, uh, s some people engage in so many things, they believe that after three days you need to gather, and after 10 days perhaps you need to gather, and after perhaps 40 days you need to gather. We don't find that in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so we'd prefer to do that which is authentic and which is more beneficial. Even if shaitan comes to us and makes us feel for a moment that you know what? Um, uh, what you've done is very little, it's very light. Why don't you, you know, you do something much more. But to be honest, it's light and it's easy, but that's the most beneficial thing. It doesn't mean that because gold is right here and it's easy for me to get, that I must go and dig the stones from out there. The gold is right here, let me collect it. Mashallah, that's Allah. So Allah's made it easy for us. Also, what I'd want to encourage uh, and spend a moment to encourage us all. Don't wait for, you, for, your, for yourself to die and then hope that someone after you is going to do something. You know, some people sometimes uh, they build a waqf and they say, okay, this is a masjid. Uh, inshallah, the name of my, my parents, may Allah grant them Jannah and so on. Do things in your life, in your life, read your Quran, fulfill your Hajj, you know, make sure your debts are all paid up and make sure whatever's happened, you know, your good, your charities, knowledge, you disseminate in a beautiful way. And inshallah, that will help much more than if someone else uh, were to come later on and do something claiming that, okay, this is on your behalf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he guide us in this regard. Uh, Jazakumullah khair, shukran for that question, my sister, and I hope the answer has helped.